You could have learned the valuable skill of raising, raising capital, capital, yet you were lazy and go, I'm just gonna use my own money. I'm gonna use my own money. I think that this is life-changing information that we're sharing. <laughs> oh my gosh. If I had this when I first started, I'd be 10 years ahead. Totally. Yeah. Me too. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. What the heck are you learning? You know, yeah. Nothing. Welcome back guys. This is video three now in the series, the masterclass series on raising capital with Pace Morby. Pace, I can't think of anyone who is more knowledgeable and more creative on all the different ways that you can structure deals using capital. So this is a really fun series. And this is like everything about what I do, if I really think about it, what, what is the magic ingredient? Like what's the secret sauce? And it's always capital structure in yeah. some way or another. Yeah, it's always capital structure. I think that this is life-changing information that we're sharing. Oh my gosh. If I had this when I first started, I'd be 10 years ahead. Totally. Yeah. Me too. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. What is the difference, Jerry, that people think is the difference between hard money and private money? Most people will either say, well, hard money is more expensive, mm -hmm. which could or could not be true, right? Or they'll say hard money charges points. Mm, which and, could or could not and, be true. And if you don't know what points is, we'll break that down. And, and private money doesn't. So two very common misconceptions about what the difference is. Yeah. So maybe we should ask, guys, leave a comment. We're gonna tell you, but leave a comment right now while you're watching this. What do you think the difference is between private money and hard money? Two words that we use all the time. So very common in the industry. Right, and you'll see this written in a lot of blogs and other descriptions and email marketing and stuff. You'll see PML, HML, right? Yeah. So those are acronyms for hard money lender, private money lender. The way that I describe the difference between a hard money lender and a private money lender is a hard money lender is an institution. They have a license to lend money. They are licensed. So they're an LO. And regulated. And regulated. Yeah. And so what they do, they have a website. They're out there branding themselves and marketing their services and saying, use our money. A hard money lender is a company that lends money to a hard asset. This is why mm -hmm. we call it a hard money lender. So they're not gonna give you a personal loan based on like, hey, I really like you, Jerry, and you have a really great business idea. I'm gonna give you money, and they have nothing hard or tangible that they can lean the property yeah. and, and control the property. A hard money lender is an institution. So if you guys type in hard money lender in whatever city you're in, you will find out that there are more hard money lenders in your city near you that are on the web saying, take our money, borrow our money. That is a hard Fill money out lender. an application right here for, for a right. loan, yeah. Most hard money lenders that I work with do not check your credit. Most of them that I work with. If you guys are in Arizona, I use a company called Frank West Capital. Mm -hmm. They are 100% of the purchase price. No credit check. All they do is they look at the deal itself and they go, we like this deal. We're gonna give you 100% of your purchase price because you got it at a good deal. Yeah. Okay. Every hard money lender is different, meaning they charge different points, different dock fees, their speed, their service, their everything is completely different, but it, they are all individual companies is a hard money lender, yeah. they're a company. You go to an office, you walk in, they have a secretary usually, and then there's two or three people in there working the loans and the paperwork and all that kind of stuff. That's a hard money lender. They are looking for ways to give you their money and they're actually competing with other hard money lenders to mm -hmm. give you money. If I knew that when I first started that hard money lenders are competing and vying for my business and yeah. that it wasn't like, how do I find a hard money lender? Dude, they're trying to find you. They're yeah. desperately trying to find you. A private money lender it, the, on the other side is I would say is like my uncle Tom. It's an individual. It's an individual. They're not licensed. That's not their main business. Um, they're individual human beings, friends of yours. In fact, if you guys pull up, open your phone, I, I always practice this with people in an audience. I go, open up your phone and let's take two minutes, just scroll through. And as you're depicting these people, what car they drive, what they do <laughs> for a living, whatever, go through and just every single person you think has $50,000, I want you to make a mark on a piece of paper. And 100% of the time, Everybody goes through and they find at least a million dollars sitting in their personal cell phone right now of people that would give them twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars. A lot of traveling nurses, engineers, doctors, lawyers, mm -hmm. salespeople, right? Um, so a private money lender is an individual that's saying my money is dead in my bank account, and I don't know how to find these deals myself, mm -hmm. and I need a Jerry or a Pace or a you to go find these deals. So I can focus on my lane, which is I'm a doctor, I'm an attorney, I'm a traveling nurse, I'm a engineer, I'm a school teacher. Whatever it is that you are, 
My favorite private money lender was one of my sellers. Her name is Desiree. Still have her mm -hmm. money to, to this day. And she is a traveling nurse. She's like, I don't ever want to find deals in real estate. I'd rather you just put my money to work for me. That's yeah. a private money lender. About where the money comes from. One way to, one differentiation that is important to understand is for a hard money lender, what they're doing is they're pooling money. They create a fund, mm -hmm. right? So they, so people put their money into the hard money fund. That hard money fund now is going to pay them, you know, 6% on their money or whatever they're paying them. And then they're going to turn around and lend it to you and me for 12% or whatever. And then they're making the difference. So they're raising money, creating a fund, relending the money out. Well, when you, when you take somebody's money as an investment and then lend it out, that's highly regulated. Yep. They're licensed, they're regulated. The that's FCC like, is involved. That's like go to jail if you screw that up. Yeah, right? it's securities violations. Yeah, and it's yeah. state by state. So that's why you'll see hard money lenders are in a certain state. Some of them go get licensed in multiple states. And there's some that are nationwide. So that means they went through the work to get registered, licensed, all that expensive regulation in, in whatever states they're in. Right. So that's why you'll see hard money lenders that are very, you know, market specific. And so, however, with private money, you know, if if Pace lends me money on a deal, it's a one to one loan. It's a direct personal loan on a real estate deal. So Pace doesn't need to be, you know, licensed or regulated or any of that to lend his money. Right. Now, if Pace lends me his money and then I turn around and lend Pace's money to Sheik, now we got a problem. Right. Because right, I'm I'm using his money as an investment into something else. Right. So people really get a lot of there's a lot of misunderstanding between the difference of those two. A, a typical hard money lender. I'd be curious to see what you you see. I would say that if a hard money lender charged me two points, twelve percent interest, yep. and would give me a loan at seventy percent of the the purchase price or seventy percent of the of what I was buying it at. Um, and I would have to come in with about 30% is typical for a first time borrower. Mm -hmm. Okay, two points. So let's say I'm borrowing $200,000. I'm gonna pay four grand in the very beginning. Before I even get the money, I'm paying four grand as part of the, the cost, right? So I'll pay four grand in cost. I'll pay a dock fee of $900 mm -hmm. usually. Appraisal sometimes. Appraisal sometimes. Yeah. So you'll have your $4,000. I, I call them junk fees, but junk they're all fees. these extra fees on top of the points. Yeah, and basically for the hard money lender, it's there to uh, protect their actual return. One of the other big distinctions for me between hard money and private money is hard money is very impersonal. It's not personal. Yeah. Like they don't care about you. They care about the underlying asset. Right. I mean, now they want a relationship and they'll give you deal. They'll give you better rates if you like do ongoing deals. Like it's not, I don't mean it that way. I mean, they're gonna underwrite the deal based on the asset. That's yeah. what they care about. They don't really care about you. They don't care about your experience. They don't care about your credit. Yeah. You know, they don't care if you're an honest, trustworthy person because they're gonna take that asset away from you if you miss your payments. Yep. Whereas private money is very relationship driven. Yep. Like if, if they don't know, like, and trust you, it doesn't matter what you promise them, they're not gonna lend you their money. I, this is a really good, maybe a good analogy. So. Um, Hard money lenders bet on the horse, private money lenders bet on the jockey. I love that analogy. That is so true. Yeah. They're they're less concerned about the deal and they're more concerned about can I trust Pace to make me right if if, if it this goes, deal goes bad. If it goes bad, right? Yeah. The hard money lender um, you know, they look at the deal. Yeah. And so he doesn't it is the relationship, but also that's the nature of a hard money lender. They go, send us the details, fill out the form, we'll give you the money. Yeah. That's that's it. And then the private money lender are like, "Okay, what if Kind of like the first deal that we talked about in, in episode yeah. one with you, or sorry, the last episode where he says, Jerry, what could go wrong here? Mm -hmm. Your private money lenders want to know what could go wrong. And if you screw me, what are you going to do about it? Are you, you going to make, make it me, right? How yeah. do you make it right? Yeah. Which is actually happening a lot. It happened a lot in 2022. Interest rates went up. A lot of home flippers. I'll tell you, here's, here's one that happened to me last year. I had a deal on Hobson right by the Mesa Temple in, in mm -hmm. uh, Arizona. I have two properties next to each other. We were gonna flip one and we we're gonna hold the other, literally next to each other, bottom from the same owner. And um, interest rates go up, price of the market goes down. Instead of me making 50 grand on the flip, I'm now gonna have to lose 50,000 bucks. Mm. I don't even have a conversation with my private money lender because I don't need to. You just wrote the check. I wrote the check. Yeah. Now, I didn't lose the money. What I did is I refinanced and I just put it in my portfolio. It's a break-even cash flow yeah. now. 
but I got my private money lender out and I never even told them about the trouble or the fact that I changed my strategy. I just said, hey, here's the timeline, here's your, here's your money back and your return. And why, Pace? Why not call them up and say, look, you know, you've made a lot of money with me, this one didn't work out, can you take a loss on this deal? Like, why didn't you, not, why didn't you have that conversation? You lose all trust. I see people trust. do this. You lose all trust. That's like, you know, um, I see men, I don't associate with them, but I see men going out there and they're married for 10 years and they go and they are have infidelity in their marriage mm -hmm. one time. Do you think that wife is ever gonna trust that guy ever again? Right. Never, yeah. never, you're, it's done. You're not building that back. It's, you, will, you will spend the rest of your life rebuilding trust. And yeah. at, the end of the at the end of your life, your wife will say, Remember that time 30 years ago that you did this? Yeah. I still never forgave you. Guys, your private money lenders will, they will, here's the difference, they will leave you. And let's just put this in a financial perspective. Like I have a lender, um, she's in Maryland, and she started out with 100,000 lending to me. It was in her IRA, we're gonna talk about that. So that means because it's in her IRA, when we do the deal, she makes the money it all goes back into the IRA, right? Right. So then her IRA just keeps growing. And then she would reinvest, so it's compounding. She's reinvesting the new capital right. back to Jerry on new deals. So I, her, her, she's now up to like $500,000 from her original 100,000. Now it's been 10 years or however long it's been. It just keeps growing, 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 growing. But think about it from my perspective. Let's say I did a bad deal and I, and I said, look, the deal didn't work out. I can give you back you know, 90,000 of your hundred and you eat 10, sorry, you know, you know, participate in my loss. Right. She'd be gone. Right, she'd be gone. And it's it's not just what that money is for her, obviously, it did a lot for her, but like the, the money you get, that $100,000, if I use it two, three times a year, another year, another year, another year, her $100,000 to me is actually worth millions. Right. Because of the deals I can do by reusing it all the time on deals but you always make your lenders right because they will be there for you if you prove that to them. Okay, so we I know we're gonna do a video on how, how to find private money lenders. That's a big video. Yes. Um, but how to find hard money lenders um, also could be another separate video, but finding a hard money lender, guys, throw a freaking rock and you'll hit 17 yes. hard money it's lenders. It's not hard. No. Yeah. It's, it, in fact, it's like a Google search. While you guys are watching this video, open up a second tab, type in hard money lender in the city you live in, and you'll go, holy crap, these people are out there. Pick up the phone and talk We to built, them. Uh, I don't know if I ever told you this, we built a really cool tool in Flipster. We call it the funding matchmaker. And what you do is um, you basically fill out an application that you're looking for funding for a deal, and we distribute it to um, over 100 nationwide asset lenders. So they'll lend 100, and then, what the crap? And then get, check this out. It's Why really haven't cool. you told me about this? Yeah, it's really cool. So then we we make them bid to buy the lead. Oh my gosh, that's so genius. And we 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 let them we let up to seven lenders. That's flipping genius. So you'll bro. literally, if you fill out the thing on there, you'll literally have seven phone calls within like a half an hour from hard money lenders, and then you can you can match their rates and stuff and compete, make them. Like find the best. I, I don't know. I don't know what else. <laughs> I don't know what else you guys want from this guy. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't even know that about Flipster. I, I, I hear a lot of great feedback from Flipster, and I did not know that you had that tool. Yeah, it's a really cool tool for. Like if I have a wonderful hard money lender, then why do I need a private money lender? I always use a hard money lender and a private money yeah. lender. Yeah, all 100 of the time. Why? why? Well, here's why: the hard money lender is not going to fund 100. percent Right. Mm. They want you to have what they call skin in the game. Like literally every dollar that we use um, on our projects, including utilities, the overages on construction, the construction costs, even paying myself a chunk of money up front, that comes from the private money lender. So you're in zero. I'm in zero, all, yeah. every time. The goal, the goal is 100% funding, and what we'll talk about, this would be a great video we can do is, how to combo between hard money and private money right. to get to 100% financing. How to financing. structure the deal. Yeah. yeah, so you always, the way I do it, and I believe the way Jerry does it, is my goal is to be into the deal, no money every single time. Mm -hmm. From time to time, you'll dip your toe in that because the deal that you're working on just makes sense because maybe you're waiting on permits and you, you, you're okay having your cash tied up in the deal for a while because it just doesn't make sense to have a private money lender tied up in a deal for a year. Yeah, reinvesting your own cash in the deals. 
But when I do do that pace, I treat my cash just like it was private or hard money. Me too. So I charge myself a rate. I now do it's all, too. It's all coming back. And the reason why, I would love to know why you that's do a it. Video, that's a video by itself. Yeah. The reason why I want to do it is because I don't ever want to crutch on my own money. That's just being yeah. lazy. Yep. Yeah. Well, you also have a time value of your money. Yeah. And um, the other thing is I tell people inflation's eating your money up anyway. So if I, like Cody Barton, my partner and I, when him and I go do a flip together, I will lend money to our partnership yeah. from my lending business. Right. And That's I'll charge 12% yeah. interest. And the deal pays you, pays that entity interest. Yeah. So that way in your mind, it's just like you're borrowing it anyway, but you're borrowing it from yourself. Right. But you're factoring that into the deal. Right. Because there's a cost of capital and that has to be factored into deals. I also don't like putting my own money in my own deals, and here's, here's one of the biggest reasons why, because this pops up in people's minds of like, why are you using, you guys are both rich. I know you guys can't tell, I don't have a full pair of pants, and Jerry, <laughs> does, her swimsuit and on. Jerry doesn't have my full flip -flops. shoes, okay? <laughs> so we can't afford nice clothes. I, people go, well, you guys are rich, why don't you guys use, use your own money? Well, our money is actually better used doing other things with it, Yeah. okay? So for, for example, with me, I will buy title company that has a 300% cash on cash return every year. I will go out and I'll do big multifamily. I'll, I'll pull my money out, buy assets that save me a ton of money on my tax savings. Mm -hmm. So my cash will go into those deals so I don't have to raise money for some of those deals. Therefore, my flips and some of my smaller projects or my development stuff, I'm not doing big stuff like you are. That money, I'm still $0 out of pocket. I extract that cash and I go buy assets with it. Yeah. So I'm constantly cat like very cash poor all the time. But you're but you're right. Like I tell my students all the time, I have students that are, you know, they've got their own money or they pull it from like a line of credit on their home equity or whatever. And I tell them, I'm like, you're being lazy. Don't use your own money. It's it's not just lazy, it's irresponsible because the, what they should be used, learning. It's not even about, it is lazy and irresponsible, but here's why it's irresponsible. You could have learned the valuable skill of raising, raising capital, capital, yet you are lazy and go, I'm just gonna use my own money. I'm gonna use my own money. And meanwhile, Jerry and I are using no, nobody's money, or not our own money, mm -hmm. and we're actually providing value to another family who's like, I got all this cash, I don't know what to do with it. You're building relationships. When you use your own money, what the heck are you learning? You know, yeah. Nothing. Yeah, you're, you're skipping a whole valuable skill set of raising capital. Hard money, institutions, private money, individuals, okay? And um, you need both of them. And also, your ability to scale in this business is contingent upon how many private money lenders you have. People will ask me the question of how much do you pay your private money lenders, okay? I'd love to hear how you do it. I've got my own way. Here's the it. answer. This is a weird analogy. I don't know why this analogy just makes so much sense to me, but let's say I'm a girl going to the prom mm -hmm. and the prom's coming up in five days. Is this the ugly girl story? No, she's hot. Okay. I think. But let's say that you have 10 guys that ask you to the prom. Which guy are you gonna go with? The hottest guy with the nicest car that buys the Corsage, right? Mm -hmm. Is that right, Sheik? Mm -hmm. Could you imagine yourself being a hot chick? No. Okay, he can't. But you know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> okay, but if, you, if one person asks you to prom, what's the answer to that one person? If only one? Only one person asks you. That's your only option. It's your only option. So it doesn't matter if that guy's missing teeth and has an eye patch and a wooden <laughs> leg. <laughs> he could be a pirate and you're gonna say yes. You're gonna say, yes, I don't wanna miss out on going to the prom and dancing with my friends and having a good night. I will go with you. The more private money lenders you have, the easier it is to kind of leverage down to a lower rate. Better rates, yeah, right. love that, that's great. And guys, I got some great free resources too uh, that I'll put in the, the link below, but one of them is I built this prospectus and it's uh, what I did is I went through 20 deals and it shows like before and after pictures, it breaks down all the numbers, and then it shows like the profit. And then it explains how, if you lend private money onto a deal, how it works, the steps to actually put the money to work. How and I what I that? do is, you, you, I'll give you it for free, you can print it at um, like FedEx or Kinko's or whatever, and it's like this thick, it's like over 100 pages. And what I, the way I use it is, if I'm gonna have a call with a private money lender or talk to them, I'll send that to them first mm. so they have it in their hands. Love it. And I made it evergreen so like it doesn't have the city and state so that you can use it. Now don't say these are my deals, say you know me and my partners, yeah, yeah. Jerry or whatever, and you can use that. But it makes you look super professional because it's like, hey, here's how this works. 
Um, I've got that. I also wrote a book on, it's an ebook, it's like 50 pages or whatever, and it, it's everything that someone needs to know to lend their money on a real estate deal. So it goes through all the terms and the How vernacular. I, find that? I have, I'll give you that for free too. Okay. It's myfundingkit.com. I always ask Jerry this question because he has so many free things. Yeah. <laughs> you are the best at this. <laughs> Thanks. I can't imagine, like, I, I look at the production and, like, what it takes to put these free resources together. And I'm like, you have spent so much money and so much time, yeah. like, a hundred deal or a hundred page prospectus on deals and structures and all that kind of stuff. Not only did you put the, the work in to create the resource, but you put in the work to gather the information and you put in the work to find the deals, run the deals, actually break all these things down. Most people that are flippers and, and they're full-time real estate people, they're not tracking deals like that. Like you yeah. had to be very committed to that, creating that resource. It took a couple of years to do that. Yeah, I mean, I created it for my own business and then I thought, you know, this will probably help other people and so now I just give it away. But what's great about it is um, all of a sudden you set yourself above everybody else because you just look so much more professional. Yeah. Like you're put together, you give them these resources, they're gonna now, if they go through the resources, they're gonna now feel more confident in you, yeah. more safe to lend you their money. It just helps build that credibility. Because hard money's easy, guys. Literally, like, they're in every market, they'll lend you the money, they're gonna charge you interest and points probably, they're gonna want you to put some skin in the game, right. they're, they're gonna have formality and an application, all that. But private money's where the magic happens. When somebody asks me, Pace, how do I find a hard money lender? Guys, all you're telling me is that you haven't Googled hard money and your city and made it's a that single easy. phone call. It's, it's literally that it's easy. easy. But they're not gonna lend you all the money. So let, here's what I say. 80%, you said 70 earlier, 70, maybe 80% of the total capital you need for a deal, hard money will lend you that all day long, if it's a deal. Now they're yeah. gonna, under, it's gotta be a deal. So that's the key here is it's gotta be a good deal, but they'll lend you the majority of the money. So now it's that other 20%, yeah. 10, 20, maybe 30% of the money that's the special sauce to getting deals done zero down. Right. And, and I, that's where private money comes in. I think um, the other thing, myfundingkit.com. Yeah, myfundingkit.com will give you those free resources that are really helpful. You yeah. guys can tell he worked on that a long time ago because how does he have myfundingkit.com even? <laughs> you must have bought that domain as a URL. Years ago. Like how I've had it a while. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you. We'll see you on the next video.